Hey, all you SaaS users out there, it's Allison and Al, and we are back with yet another fantastic feature addition to SaaS by Celeramp. So without further ado, I will let the creator uh, tell you all about it. Al, what have you got for us this time? Hi, folks. It's, it's, a, it's a change on, the, on an addition where we've moved a few things around because it makes sense. Uh, we've, what we've done, we, we've created a new panel, which is called Look Up Details. And it's an amalgamation of like your scan history panel that like you had before. And like we've moved the source from the notes and tags panel into the Look Up Details panel. Because like your notes and tags are associated with an ASIN. So whenever you look at an ASIN for more than once, it's got the same notes and tags. While the Look Up is that time when you are looking it up. Okay. So in your look at details, we've got the source. So what the source is, it's basically where you bought the products from. So if you want to get the products again, you'd look at the same source. So if you're doing online arbitrage, the source will normally be the URL of the, of the, of the page that you actually ordered the products from. Whilst if you're doing retail arbitrage, the, you would put in the, like, the store name where you're shopping at. You could use it in conjunction with the geo targeting if you want to store the map coordinates as well. You could use that, but a source lets you manually type in a source. Like if you're using the Chrome extension, it will automatically pop populate the URL with the page that you're on when you actually do the SAS, or you can sort of type in whatever. So what okay. the, it's probably worth pointing out to people that do RA, um, you can also even put the store number in here if you want to, if you want to get that specific, you know, so Tesco at, um, you know, Nottingham or something like that. Yeah, it, it, you, you, you can basically put in there anything you want. Like we'd recommend it for your source, but if you've got a different sort of usage for it, yeah, go for it. Yep. Um, so quickly explain, you look at details, at the top you've got the blue number four in, that means you've done this look at four different times in the past. So you've actually got the history table here, which is like, when you've like found the products in more than one place, it'll be automatically be added to your history. So this is why it's important for you to put your so your, the actual source in so you know where you found this little product at that time. So in the history table, we've got the date, the hint on the date shows you the time, now that is converted to your time zone. So if you've got a VA sourcing for you, say in the Philippines, for them it's going to be a different time. But when you look at it in your history, it will convert it into your time zone. Next up is in the, in the source column. So the source is obviously the one that you've entered in the source at the top. Then you've got the icon to the left, which is um, whether you did it on the SAS web app, Chrome extension, or the sort of, on mobile. We've also got the hint on here, which shows you what your search term was. So it just shows you what you're searching for at the time. For most so of the time. Can I, can I ask you something there? Because because back to what you're saying about having a VA or having another person who's also searching, like this really helps you indicate um, maybe the differences that people people found when they were sourcing. So. I find it on Amazon, or I find it using the search term Lego 75 to 76, but somebody else might be searching um, and they might find it using Star Wars Stormtrooper. So it yeah. really can help you narrow down um, the best way that you came about finding that product. Yeah, I must have really thought of it from that point of view, but yeah, you could do. It's... Yeah, or, or if somebody's out in a store and they scan it and you see it happen on the mobile app, but then you're also looking online, um, you'll be able to tell differences to when you found it, where you found it. Um, ah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Like, like, like most of the time, if you do it on the mobile app, it will be a barcode that's in there. So the search term would be the barcode. But, but yeah, it, it, like you, can, you can do text search on there. And then, well, you can now do the share search on your mobile. And then it would, whatever this search term was, the share term was. Yeah, so then you've obviously got the text. If it is a link, the link is clickable to the site. Like the hint on there is the full link. Well, we, we only display like a friendly link because you only need to know it's from logo.com. You don't need to see the full address. But the link goes to the full address. Then if you enter the cost price, the cost price is there and the sale price that you entered, all oh, that was automatically populated at the time and it was scanned is there. So in, in this one, we've got like four items 
in the history. What I will do, we'll find this Stormtrooper Lego bust again, but on another site, and I'll show you how you'd use this. So, hmm, well, we'll know. I think John Lewis saw this. So we'll do a search on, we'll do a search on John Lewis. So just a normal right click SAS search. Yeah, a few of them come up. I think it's going to be the top one there. So we'll go into SAS this way. So now it's it scrolling down. So as we can see in a look at details here, the source has been automatically populated to, to johnlewis.com. We can see it in the, in the list here, and you can see the, like, the previous history so before. So we just quickly go back. So before we had Amazon at the top, Lego, Smiths and Argos. Now as it's a new scan, we've got John Lewis at the top and these sort of four times you found it before. And I see that you did not put a sale price in yet, so it has not populated a sale price in the history, has it? Yeah, like it's putting a sale price in the profit calculator. Like when this come, when we do this again, that sale price will actually be in the history. So yeah, as that's the current one, it hasn't been set yet. But okay. Okay. It, yeah, it will be. So really, in addition to helping you understand what maybe your VAs or your staff members are doing, um, where people are sourcing from, you're also going to start seeing a history of um, prices that you were that you were looking at pricing at. Um, you're going to be able to see the ebb and flow. This product in particular, you can see in the offers panel there. I mean, there is quite a wide variety of prices that are within there. So I'm guessing if we looked at the at the history of the product, it's probably fairly up and down. Um, yeah. But I think that would be good because you'll be able to kind of understand. I was looking at this product when when I was thinking about pricing it at 45 pounds, and now I'm looking at pricing it at 105 pounds, and it'll kind of give you that full, you know, oh, if they were selling at this rate before, what's that going to do to sell? What will it do? Um, how will they sell now at this different price? It kind of gives you almost another way of of looking at your history, looking at the history of the product. As you mentioned prices, I want to quickly show you. Like in SaaS, you can, whenever there's a sale price, if you click on a sale price, it will automatically put it in the profit calculator. This works with a look at details as well. So clicking on these sale prices will update the calculator, update all the calculations. And then same with the cost. If you click on the cost, it will, it will update the cost price in the calculator and all the all the figures change as you can see I don't know how many thousands of calculations we do in the background whenever you click that's on so user friendly Al. that's awesome yeah. and, and i think that's a perfect example for people who might not know the stuff that that uh that seller amp and, and al come up with that's a perfect example of how we're trying to make your lives easier so then so other way to sort of look at, using the look at the details you've got a source you've got an edit button next to it to edit your source now you can see that's the full url that is in there. So I'm just going to change this to Tesco just because I'm thinking about it. So you've got save or save the source. That the undo will undo the change you've just done. This is the repeat, which I'll show you in a second. So if I just save that one away now, we've saved it away as Tesco. What I will do, I'm just going to do the same search again whilst I'm on the John Lewis site. So I'll go, go back to the same product. Like obviously you wouldn't use it this way. Um, but we can see here, it's, it's John Lewis again. That's a Tesco that we saved. Now if you were doing RA, you're normally gonna be doing more than, you're going to be in the same store, you'll often buy more than one thing. So what the repeat last source does is exactly that. As you went to Tesco last time, click and repeat last source, we'll put Tesco in okay. again, just so you don't have to keep typing it in. So particularly when you're on your mobile um, and you're out there doing RA and, and, and that's gotta be really handy to be able to just keep banging that source in there, doesn't it? Yeah, because like with the extension, we'll automatically populate it with a URL. We can't always must be populated with a store and so we don't know where you're well, <laughs> We don't really know where you are. So yeah, no, that makes yeah. sense. But um, <laughs> and again, you could you could make a Tesco store one, two, three, four. You could make it, you know, you could yeah. you could add more to it if you want to. So, so you've got to like, 
Save it first time and repeat, well, repeat it. And that is saved actually on the device. So if you've got multiple people with mobiles doing it, each mobile will save their last one. So you can have multiple people sourcing from different places and it isn't going to sort of interfere with each other. Perfect. And what? other thing we've done now on this, you can see you've got a load more button. So we only display the last five times just so it isn't a screen full. So if there's more than five, load more button appears, simply clicking on that and it'll bring the next lot of five in. Okay. And once you've got all the, all, once it's all the ones that you've done are visible, the button disappears. So say if you're doing something for the first time, I'm going to try whatever this is, the Millennium Falcon, this might not be the first time. Let me, I'll choose a product which does look a bit more unusual. So if it's the first time, you see we've got no history table because like there's no history. We've just got your John Lewis that we've just done now. Okay, great. And then one at the top. Yeah, and and, and, and that that's it. It is your your history, your lookup history. Perfect. And available as you would expect uh, across all three tools: mobile app, web app, and the Chrome extension. Um, and obviously, all your lookup details are shared across all three tools as well. So you never need to worry about. Uh, information only showing up in one tool and not showing up in the other tools. You'll see it in all of them. So Al, any parting words for these folks? Um, you know, one thing I'll add is like, when you go to an item from your history, that isn't a new lookup. That's like you're looking at things you've looked at before. So it isn't going to register as a new one. So we'll go back to that one, see there's no history because that's the only time. Great point. If I went to the Amazon page, it would be, it would, it would be a fresh lookup because we're loading, looking up again. Yeah, so, so really, it, it logs it when you're going to retrieve the information from someplace else, not when you're within your own account, within your own history. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, enjoy that, everybody. Um, happy lookup happy look details day. And um, send us any feedback, any comments, anything that you, uh, that you uh, any thoughts that you have about this new panel, and uh, we'll be happy to hear it. Uh, you can either drop those comments in here or send us a note it's to support at selleramp.com. Thanks for your time, everybody, and have a great day. Cheers.